for you all. Great. Great. It's six o'clock. We're going to call to order right away. And Mary, do you want to do attendance? Or are you just going to pull it off the? I'm just going to take uh, screenshots of everybody that's here, and then I'll just put it on the notes. How's that? Superb. Guess. Do, do, do. Who do we have as guests? I don't think we have any guests. I'm a, am I a guest? I don't know. No, you're a part of the committee. Well, I want to be treated special. Do guests get treated special? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Welcome, Katie Renard. <laughs> Thanks. I needed that. It's been a hot day. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Well, then I guess we're going to go ahead. We made it through one, two, and three. How about four? Convention. Hey. I was one of the people who had the honor of being able to go to convention. Uh, we do need to first impart some sad news. Ron Hill was running for KI trustee, and both he and Alan Guire, who have been a friend to Moark, both both lost. So yeah. our new trustees are Steve Ingram from Indiana, Gary Jander from California, and Jackie Sue McFarlane from Pacific Northwest. We did, um, did elect Lee Kwan Young from Malaysia as our vice president designate, Katrina Barenko, our president elect designate, and Bert West as our president designate. Um, other pieces of news within the Kiwanis Children's Fund, there is a new fellowship available. It is the Dr. Will Blackman Fellowship, and it will be $2,500 for that fellowship level. And they were trying to come up with something in between because basically they had a thousand or $1,250 level and then they had a $25,000 level so that they thought that this at 2,500 would be a good thing. They had kind of requested that during convention they come up with $25,000 and I believe that they made that goal. It was, it was real close when they last announced it and I'm pretty sure that the rest of them would have come through. Is this instead of the Hickson? It is in addition to. So that is a lesser amount of money. This is an in-between amount of money. And then there's a $25,000 level as well. I believe there's no more Zellers. Right. Correct. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, amendments. I don't know if you want me. I'll just go through them really quickly. And they were protection of the Kiwanis brand and marks and that passed 94 percent in favor. Um, amendment two was designation of Kiwanis international officers and that was presented that they were needing to spend a whole lot of money on insurance for a large board that would include the officers, the trustees, and the governors and so they wanted to pair it back that it would just be the officers. And while I did not vote yes, 85% of the population did. And so that did pass. Um, amendment three was to relocate the provision in the bylaws regarding the new member ad fee and to clarify that text, and that passed with 94%. Five was emergency conditions adjustments, and really that's just sort of cleaning up what they found out during COVID, how they need to operate under emergency conditions. Carla, and did you do four? Did you? 
I... No, <laughs> four. To clarify that clubs must be in good standing to propose bylaw amendments and resolutions. And that was kind of a no brainer that passed at 99%. Thank you, Barb. I turned too many pages. Anyhow, five was the emergency conditions and that passed at 88.8% .8 to just come up with to take things out that don't need to be there and put things in to handle emergency conditions. Um, <clears throat> Amendment six is to provide for candidate nominations and initial review of proposed amendments and resolutions with final voting to take place via secure remote voting. This was to enable people that were not at convention that could be delegates to go ahead and have a vote. And that was defeated. It needed a two thirds majority and it got 54.45. So things will remain that you must go to convention in order to be voting on anything. And That six. There were a lot. Had yeah. to make up for three. Okay, years. so seven <clears throat> was to revise the election process for the Kiwanis International Vice President to allow delegates more options if no candidate receives a majority vote on the first ballot. And that did pass also with 89%. Eight was basic structure governing comprehensive bylaws revisions. And basically what they're saying is they need permission to redo all the bylaws, clean them up, bring them up to date, that this has not been done since 88 and 89, more than 30 years ago. So they do have permission to do that and they will work on that during the year because it passed with 87.6%. Um, nine, I'm sorry, the next was a resolution, not, not an amendment. And that was to request that Kiwanis International Board propose the up the pending bylaws, modernization, revision, and adopt special rules that will govern consideration of the modernization revision at the 2023 convention. And that resolution passed almost 91%. That was so they could start working on the uh, do right. or on the uh, bylaws modernization now rather than waiting until October. And then Amendment 9 is Lieutenant Governor election criteria. And that's something we really wanted to see pass because what happens is if we don't have anyone who is going to be a Lieutenant Governor in any one division, we have appointed someone from out of the division other times to cover it. But Mary cannot make that work currently you have to be a member of that division in order to become a lieutenant governor so this is not to bring people in from outside this is to cover a division so they are not without a lieutenant governor and that did that did pass and now we can appoint someone from outside the division if no one inside the division wants the job so it, it is really good to have the availability of having someone rather than no one there. That passed by 79.6%. Then we had Amendment 10, which was prohibition on purchase of alcohol. And it just means that Kiwanis International would not use any revenue, including dues or fees, 
or non-dues revenues, which kind of seem to be the kicker in this, to purchase alcohol for any Kiwanis International board members, our staff, our spouses, our companions. Anyhow, this is saying, even if somebody said that they would sponsor the alcohol for an event, and so you were gonna get two drink tickets courtesy of some vendor to Kiwanis, that would not be okay because that would be considered non-dues revenue that we should have been using for something else. Anyhow, the prohibition did not pass. It was opposed and failed because 68% of the people opposed it. Then Amendment 11 is for Tickets. First class, our business class air tickets for Kiwanis International board members or staff or their spouses or companions. And that also did not pass. 56% opposed that. Then lastly was 12, the family membership status, which quite a few people thought was a good idea. The idea of that was that if you had a husband and wife, a mother, daughter, mother, son, whatever, more than one person residing in the same household that wanted to be club members, the first person would pay full dues and the second person would pay 50%. And there was a lot of back and forth about this, the fact that it would give us less revenue and the other train of thought was that it would give us more members and more hands for service. But this did fail because there were only 49% in favor. So that's that. And we had a lot of really wonderful education sessions and a lot of good information. Anyone else who attended the convention have anything that I have forgotten to bring up? Oh, I thought it was a good conference. I had a good time at um, a lot of good education sessions. So if you weren't able to attend, hopefully you were able to attend virtually yep, and get, get some good ideas. Victor, any thoughts on your part? Victor was there. Yes, I thought it was excellent. Um, and um, yeah, I thought very, very good. Um, I am curious about one thing, the um, amendment about if you, about voting, if you attend virtually, is that, does that seem to be gaining momentum from year to year? So maybe eventually it will pass. Well, it certainly keeps coming back up. <laughs> and, well. and my thought is, you know, if we're truly an international organization, we need to not disenfranchise a large amount of the people that True. belong to Kiwanis International. Absolutely. But, you know, also conventions keep shrinking. I think that many people are afraid that the conventions will go away altogether if we're just going to do things online. So, you know, there's there's kind of right all kinds of thoughts that go into this that make the final decision and at this point it seems to be about a 50 50 thought process of the people that were voting okay. well it's starting it is starting to gain uh, momentum because it has been coming up year after year this is actually the first year that kiwanis internationally uh, the board actually uh, to endorse this he, they yes. thought that this was a good idea and, Really, I have to say, when you look at a worldwide service organization of almost 200,000 members and 1,500 attended the convention, that, that's not a very good odds. And the people that actually were there to vote were like 1,100. So you, you wow. stop and you think about it. We're not getting good representation across the world. Any, any idea how many attended virtually? Uh, did they say, Barb, do you know? Carla, do you know? 
I don't, I don't. I don't remember what they said virtually, but there were a number of people that attended. We oh. had about 15, 15 or 16 people that attended virtually. Right. But I, not, I don't believe that it was even as many people as attended in person. Oh, which, right. I think you're right. You know, you would think you would think that if you had that option to attend and if it was something important to people that they would have showed up for the virtual sessions, but they did not. And it was only 45 bucks, which I just means. wanted to say that there were a lot of international people there. And, you know, I wouldn't know my all the friends from the Philippines and Nepal, and there would be no way I'd meet them if we voted virtually. And they're right. good friends. Or Lee Kuan Young, for that matter. I would not That's have true. known him. Yeah. So. Oh, that is the one thing I forgot to mention, is <laughs> that we had the Kiwanis flag in May taken to the top of Mount Everest. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That was cool. That, that, was, that yeah. was very neat. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you're on Facebook, that was the post that uh, we put out uh, that we've actually made it to the top of the world. So we're excited. Tiffany, did you have anything to add about the convention? Oh, I just, I think it was really good. I mean, there's a lot of good positive points. And if you have, if you have an experience, it, it's a good experience. So. Yeah. And uh, Tiffany, was this your first one? No, my second. I went to, I went to um, Orlando. Okay. So this was, we had one of our club members this was her first one and she was she really enjoyed the experience and got a lot out of it i and i do think it's a more dynamic experience in person although the yes. online, uh, yeah it, it's yeah for sure people. yeah so that's true i i have mixed emotions about it and i i did think it was interesting that this is the first time that the board the board sponsored this amendment not right. they didn't just endorse it they sponsored it right Interesting. It kind of reminds me of back in the 80s when it, the issue of admitting ladies to Kiwanis kept coming up, coming up, coming up. It's five <laughs> or six years before it finally got passed. So maybe this will be a similar thing that we'll look back on. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it too true. will be a great decision by Kiwanis. That's right. It to allow women into Kiwanis. <laughs> Yeah, I have that legacy of my club of voting twice against women joining Kiwanis back when I was a delegate for our club. And I don't think it really is the wording of allowing. It's uh, uh, accepting that opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> okay, moving right along. <laughs> uh, Barb, do you want to give us some information on the new club growth and planning? Well, yes, we were successful in opening to two new clubs, one in Springfield North and one in Branson, although we need to get the paperwork in because it's been 30 days. And um, so we have a little bit of paperwork to do. We are um, have tentatively planned for the next to do another um, two club opening in Little Rock and East End. And we want to get that pre-work done to see that to see that it's viable and hopefully we're looking about August 18th to start the opening. So then again, we'll have to have the, uh, we, we are eligible for $4,000 per year. I think we'll probably spend 2000 on Springfield North and Branson. So we'll be eligible for another 2000 approximately in Little Rock. So um, I want to, Ask Tiffany again. Poor Tiffany, she's getting picked on. Tiffany, oh, <laughs> was this your first pick club on opening? her? Was this your first club opening? It was. What'd you think? I liked it. So yeah, it was fun. Did what? Did you what? Did you learn, or did you learn anything? Or <laughs> <laughs> I really learned that you just got to keep asking. You know what I mean? You got to get the nose out of the way and just keep going. And Tiffany. So, uh, yeah, and I learned very many. There's very many different approaches to everything. You know, I liked, I liked getting the uh, input from you know, Brad's got a different approach than Barb, and you know, and uh, Carla's got a different approach than all three of you. So you know, it's good to see each. You got to kind of navigate your course by who you're talking to. So, and, and it needs to be your own so that right. it's sincere. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. 
And Tiffany was successful in recruiting several new members. So I think that she was able to make it her own and, um, and to use it, to use that, the strategies she learned. Um, so those are the, um, we're still ne negotiating about town and country, but uh, we have some other options that would involve Tiffany again in Winsville <laughs> and um, Lake St. Louis. Great. Um, Closer to home. Yeah, you don't have to drive so far. So are you game for those, Tiffany? Sure. Okay, good, good answer. <laughs> Okay. That's my and, report. And backing up a little bit on on the next club plans, I would say that we need to have plans and we need to be intentional with them. So I would say more strongly, we are looking to do that on the 8th, 9th, <coughs> 10th with organization on the 11th of August. Oh, eight. I, I thought part of the 18th. That's that's, we said the 18th, or at least that's what I wrote down. So we probably need to talk offline. I like the 8th better. <laughs> it's a little separation from that in the convention. Yeah. No, we said appointments with, oh, that's July. Yeah, we would yeah. start appointments in July. and Right, but we had travel on the 7th of August, which was Sunday, and working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the 8th, 9th, 10th. An organization on the 11th. Um, let's talk. Yeah, you two work that out amongst yourselves. <laughs> Eighth, nine, tenth, eleventh. Okay. Okay, Mary Sally, Club Leadership yes. Education, ma'am. Okay, so we are up to 21 uh, trainers now in our division, which is really good because I started out with 16 when I took over and and took uh, inventory. Uh, everybody should have, I'm hoping that Paul, I'm hoping you got the slides and put them on the, um, I'm sorry, I'm really distracted. Um, got the slides and put them on the website. I'm still working on, uh, Jerry gave me some beautiful slides on district oh. information. I've got to add in the Earl Collins slides. I'm hoping to get that done by the 1st of July. Um, I have way more on my plate than I am, even be, be capable of handling right now. Um, so just be patient with me, but we're hoping to get those by the 1st of July and everybody can do what they want with the uh, district slides and the district information. Um, Region four has two trainings coming up, uh, one July 9th and one July 16th and the invitations went out for those. Thank you to Bonnie Paulsmeyer who took care of that for me. And thank you to Mary Vaughn, who took care of sending stuff out to the lieutenant governors. I don't remember what it was, though. Um, and thank you to Jerry for all the slides that he put together. They are awesome. And it's just a matter of the lieutenant governors, get with your trainers. You should have the list. Uh, there'll be a new list coming out in the next couple of days with the addition of one more person. Les, who's our new person? His name's Kevin. Uh, Kevin Skabitsky. No wonder I couldn't remember the last name. <laughs> <laughs> but he will he will be a secretary trainer, uh, and he has a lot of experience, so that is wonderful. And yeah. he's in which divisions? Uh, 13, and he's also going to fill in probably in 26. Okay. Since Shane is serving as lieutenant governor 26, and they're in the same club, we've okay. already indicated that. And I'm thinking about using him in another division, but anyway... Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm totally familiar with it that he's capable of doing it. And I think he was Good. pleased to be asked to do it. Thank you. Mary, you got your hand waving. I like to just wave at you, Mary. Uh, <laughs> no, I uh, have you given me all those names to put out there on the web? Or um, on, uh, the portal buzz or I, I think you have most of them. You, you were on my list of people to call today. But you okay. know what? My day didn't go as I thought it was going to go. Well, call me tomorrow. I will. You're on the top of my list for tomorrow. I, I know I'm on your list. I just don't want to know which one. I know. Just don't <laughs> be on the one that I'm trying to juggle because it's really okay. a bad list. Okay. Um, so I just, Actually, I have way more happening than I can handle right now. Um, but Mary, Mary and I will get together, get things organized, and hopefully by July 1st, 
everybody will have everything they need. There will be an online training that Kiwanis International is giving. That is August 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. It's a different training each night. Uh, that counts for training. The only problem is there's no district information with that. Uh, so they lose out on all the district information and Jerry has put together such beautiful information for us because uh, there's so much people don't know about the district. Right. And that's people that have been in for you know, 15, 20 years, not just the new ones. And then um, we will have a training. I'm working on getting set up with a training at the uh, convention also. So hopefully we can get everybody trained. That's my plan. That's my goal. But my life isn't working the way I want it to right now. So um, God is laughing very hard every time I make a plan right now. So um, that's my full report. Anybody have any questions? I just want to say I feel your pain. And I, agree. I know it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So oh, that's it for me, Carla. Thank you. <clears throat> um, district convention, Katie, please. Yes. I muted myself <laughs> so I wouldn't keep interrupting. I'm so terrible. <laughs> so we had our first meeting and I think that Mary shared our notes and she added some to the notes that I had. We're having our second planning meeting Wednesday at five o'clock. Uh, we did establish a goal, a lofty goal, no doubt, of 160 to 175 in our registration total because we had 139 registered in 2021. The date we finalized to send out the former registration email was July 11th. We, Angie, uh, agreed. We all talked about that, that if we send it too soon, they forget about it. You know, it's just a challenge anytime. And we have someone working on a specific logo for us. Angela is doing that. And um, we have, uh, Susan is sending out the display table opportunities and Mary was to forward that template to her. The service project is the East Centennial Club and it's bringing items for the Convoy of Hope. Uh, Roy is to print the program again for us, but. Paul Sherman, when he was on the call with us, said he thought he could sell some ads and that other members of his club could, but I haven't gotten that confirmed. I'll try to find out some more about that on Wednesday. We will need local people to sell the ads, really, and uh, so we'll see how that goes. And now that everybody's back from the, the convention, we want to start working with the education subcommittee. Right now, that's Katie, Susan, Mary, and Angela, and Brad Boyd. Uh, for Friday afternoon and Saturday morning sessions. And this is in addition to Mary, Mary's sessions on um, CLE for presidents, treasurers, et cetera. Marsha and Shane from the Springfield Club are continuing to plan the trivia night with Les. Our Les is at least giving them questions. Uh, so Friday uh, looks like we are deciding if there's a lieutenant governor's makeup training needed. Does anybody have an opinion on that? Do you think lieutenant governors will be there? You think we could offer that online? Uh, do you want to fit that in because it would take them out of other sessions? That's our question. You know, maybe, maybe since we didn't have a good turnout at uh, Springfield, you know, maybe we should just go on and try an online training. I think it might be easier for people to to come in online and then we're not taking that time away from the convention good idea i say it's worth a try to do online since the other one didn't work so very too. well i That's agree all right i'm going to consider that a yes vote from everyone how's that well do you think you should talk to roy i guess so well yeah I guess we have to <laughs> well I, we can ask him or we can just yeah. tell him what we're, or we can tell him what we decided. I don't know. Uh, no, I he will probably be fine with that, but we should check with him. Thanks for that. Reminder. Yeah. And I'll he check. couldn't he couldn't be here this evening because they are traveling back from Indy because sure. he had a meeting with Bert West today after convention. So they were gonna leave right after that. Yeah, I saw an email come from him. And Thank the mayor you. has been confirmed by Les, and we've confirmed the color guard. Shane got uh, 
the color guard for us. Uh, so past lieutenant governors will meet eight to nine. Mary, is there breakfast served there so that the meeting will be without breakfast or do we plan on breakfast? Well, we haven't really discussed the breakfast yet. Uh, I have to talk with the hotel and I haven't had a chance to give them a call yet. Okay, but my but call, uh, I'm, time. Talk, yeah. I'm talking to them tomorrow so I can find out for sure whether breakfast is included, which it was in the original contract, or if they modified that contract and didn't clarify with me. So I need to talk yeah. to the hotel. Okay. All right, thank you. And then uh, the We Are Family Lines the keynote from the International President Burt West and uh, House of Delegates session and dismissal at the end of the day and nothing happening on Sunday. That's where we are right now. And if you are a Lieutenant Governor or if you are a trustee, be sure to get that information out of there, out here, that we have folks, Burt West coming in, who is the incoming president of Kiwanis International to be with us. It That's would huge. really be a wonderful time to make sure you make convention. Like and it. we're getting it promoted in Division 13 and around. So uh, in Region 3, I should say, we're promoting it. Let me ask a question, Katie. Uh, do you know what the advertising rates are going to be for the program? The reason I ask, I've got a commitment for the back page, regardless of how much it costs. So I need to know how much to tell her. It's a million dollars then. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't think we should raise them over what we I'm had not, last year. Hmm. I'm not thinking we're going to go any higher than what we had last year. So what um, were they? What were I they think the back page was like $200 maybe. I'll have to double check that. Okay, you know, let me know. The page and the inside cover and the inside back cover, those are premium spots. So I'll get that to Susan. I thought they were too big, but there. I could be wrong. Yeah, get them, get them to me because Paul and I have already been working on some okay. names who we're going to go after. So as long as we know, yeah. as soon as we know the rates, then we can say, uh, we think you'd be good to donate, da 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 da. So, good. but anyway, we're working on that. Okay. Mary. Right. Is it still at the Plaza Hotel? It's still at the University Plaza Hotel. We could not find an alternative location. So oh. I'm holding them to July 2nd. <laughs> the second week of July that all the air conditioning will be fixed. I'm holding them to that. Good for you. I have to go install air conditioning myself. <laughs> as long as we have water. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, you know, you guys, you got to admit, <laughs> You paid almost $200 a night and people came in and didn't have water. So Jeez. air conditioning, water, you know, at least the alarms going off like in the middle of the night. night. And yeah. we, and we complained about the green stay. We didn't have a fire drill. <laughs> That's right. No fire drill at the green stay. Uh, the only thing uh, I was pointed out to me that I did not invite Mary, Sally, and Robin to our planning meeting Wednesday evening. So I will make sure I add, I'll send you that information. I apologize okay. profusely. That's all right. Okay, now I'm gonna all try right. to go through here with people who are not Lieutenant Governors to see if we have anything else that needs to be brought up. And if I get done and I've missed you, please say something. Jerry, did you have anything to add? You're on mute, Chair. Sorry about that. Uh, I really don't have anything to report new. We do finally have the Greater Hot Springs uh, Action Club up and running. I think they had their first meeting last week, which is a big plus. We still have a couple of uh, clubs, one at Siloam Springs and one at Springfield that are inactive and have not paid their dues and will lose their charter if, if we don't get them up and going and dues paid and, and roster submitted by October 1st. So I'll be trying to work with those with those two uh, clubs to see if perhaps we can salvage those clubs. We don't have any new, new action clubs to report for this year in our district. And the good news that I have is that I'm going to be leaving this position on October the 1st and we do have Britton Rhodes from the Lee, Lee Summit Club, who's agreed to be our 
district chair for the Action Club next year. And I'm really excited about her. She's been with that club for several years, done a great job with the Lee Summit Action Club. We, we, we mean all of us, have got to get in there and support her and encourage her. And I think if we do, we'll, we'll see some great results from an Action Club from Britain if, if she has the support that, uh, that she needs. So, uh, Carla, I told Carla that would be my top priority of being the Action Club chair is to find my replacement. And, Carla, I think I've got that. So, well, and you did a fine job because we, everyone who was in Kansas City at that mid year met her, and she's she's very dynamic and a person, perfect person for that position. Can Thank you. you. I, I asked Laura Stamps, who I who was the who preceded me in this position for several years. I said, "Who in the district should I go try to recruit?" And she she mentioned Britain right off the top of her head. So. I think we've got the right person. We've just got to make sure she's got the support and feels like she's part of, of the team, so to speak. So, Will you spell her name? Yes, B-R-I-T-T-I-A-N. Rhodes, R-H-O-D-E-S, Britton Rhodes. Great. I like her name. <laughs> yes, I, I do too. Yeah. I, I have a question. Uh -huh. I have Go a ahead. Question. As long as Doris has been action and she brought it up, you know, and all of that, I th think that the district needs to come up with some kind of recommendation, commendation, I mean, award of some kind significant, and maybe even establish something the Doris stamps for future action club people because Doris has worked and worked as well as had support from her husband as well. So and yes, she has. She's I think she needs to be yeah, <laughs> she needs to be commended some way or another. And I'll throw the other out just as a thought, but a good thought, Les. Yeah. Uh, speaking of finding your replacements, I'm gonna jump in here and say that Tom South, who evidently checked out on this needs to find his replacement, and so does Rick Quattlebaum for trustee. I need two trustee positions. I've not heard that they've been filled. So I am going to start bugging them to get those two trustee positions filled. And they need to be elected. And yeah. they need to be elected. You can't just go, I'll be the trustee. You got to have an election. Apparently, I'll, I'll slip in there for our for our region, both me and Katie have mentioned to Rick that we would, would be willing to serve. And whenever Katie found out that I had told Rick that, that uh, then I think she backed down, but uh, I've been having some second thoughts, Katie. So think about it. Uh, you know, I just looking at my position here, my age, uh, you might you might make a better representative for our oh. region than, than me. But, oh. uh, Jerry, so I so respect you and all you've done for Kiwanis that I would never run against you. <laughs> but I would take your place if you get tired of it and have to leave. Well, that, that's a possibility. Decide what you want to do and we need to get elected. Somebody's got to be elected. Yep, yeah. need to take care of that. Soon. Uh, we, Susan, we've got two good oh, candidates sorry. in our region is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> there you go. Step up and do the election. <laughs> Susan LaFon, did you have anything for us? I do not. And good evening, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Susan. And your kitty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold Hold on. On. And the dog. Any comments for us, sir? Uh, yes. Uh, th there seems to be a problem with find a club at KI, uh, when you punch in your zip code, at least in region four, about half of the clubs do not come up and another half have broken links to their website, which means there's no contact information for your club. So I would encourage everyone to check theirs out and see if it works right. Uh, and if not, uh, get in touch with uh, what Kiwanis International uh, Member Services and see if you can get it fixed. Well, just so that you know, Find a Club is a Kiwanis International thing, and it has to do with the GPS, the actual coordinates of where your your um, uh, club is located, 
And that they have been having trouble with their GPS. That's something I've been working with them for a long time on. And it just continues to be an issue. But you're correct when it comes to uh, Kiwanis clubs and web pages and that kind of stuff. So yeah, they need to get those up to date, but not all clubs have a web page. Yeah. We also have a problem that lots of clubs seem not to report uh, what contact information these days. That makes my telephone ring apparently with strange phone calls from all over, one from Arkansas even, uh, because we're apparently one of the few clubs that still reports contact information. You know, well, what uh, Kiwanis has a cybersecurity uh, guidelines, which you shouldn't report names or contact information. But of course, Kiwanis clubs shouldn't be silent. We, if we have prospective members out there, they need to get hold of somebody. But otherwise, uh, what contact information is show up at the next meeting, and that's all the information we provide. So I would suggest that people work on that. Well, also, just so you know, we've put contact information out there. And the reason we took the contact information off is that people were getting hacked. And they go out and they look for these, these contact information and they hack people. So my number's out there. I get calls all the time of, to look people up and to find people. I think it's just going to be the way it is unless people get their web pages up and running and they have that contact information on the web pages. And it's hard for people who want to join a club. And right. when I go to try to help a person, I can't find a contact for the for the prayer uh, the Lincoln Kiwanis. I can only find an estimated time they meet, so I can't get a connection to someone uh, that I need to that said I'm interested, and we get something from. I was outside my own division doing that, but anyway, it was still not working, <laughs> whatever. So uh, you can solve that by putting something like info at SiloamSprings.org or, you know, well, not giving a name. And, and I have that. The Lincoln Club does not. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, that is a suggestion we could make in lieu of names. And the other thing is that that loss of GPS happened to me. When our club stopped meeting at the restaurant, I took the restaurant off. Well, that's where the that's where the coordinates came from. Exactly. I went back and put the court. I went back, called Bryce, and said, "Use the coordinates of the restaurant," and then it shows up. So yeah. those are two workarounds. By the way, if everybody's noticing that Barb has two black eyes, <laughs> Charlie you. did not beat her up. I just want you guys to know. She didn't get along with the sidewalk in Indianapolis and the sidewalk one. That's true. I was walking and putting the address of the hotel in and ran up into, well, they have concrete barriers to keep the cars off the sidewalks. And I ran into a concrete barrier and it won. And I just <laughs> have two We tell our kids all the time not to text and walk. I know. That's it. Right. I know. It. <laughs> our text and drive. You tell her, you tell her Tiff. <laughs> Right. That's exactly right. I'm living Our, proof. We're, we're glad you're better, Barb. Yes. Hi. Thank you. Uh, Jim Fritz, do you have anything for us for our key club? Yeah, we moved to um, Greenstay, thanks to you all. Saved $50 a night per room, and they didn't charge us for our meeting room, so we're moving there. Uh, Don Leupold and Gary Baker are looking into options for our conference. Uh, University Plaza doesn't want to work very well with us. And we, I'm working to get Carla and Roy a letter proposed. We are looking at an option. As long as I've been there, we've never had 19 lieutenant governors. And we plotted all our schools. And we use the region, uh, Moark region uh, map, and we think we came up with a good proposition. Uh, only two schools on the borders will be moved and the St. Louis area will be one division. So we're looking to hopefully bring that to the conference and look for some assistance and approval. Good, thank you so much. Any and questions for Jim? That'll bring us down to 10 divisions instead of 19. What are the dates? What are the dates? What are the dates? There's we don't no have date. any dates set. Uh, 
To my knowledge, we have to get it approved through MOARC, and we're going to bring that to the conference. I'll go through Carla, Roy, and Mary Vaughn. But you do have you have meeting days set, don't you? I mean, not conference, but meeting. Yeah, we do have Thanks. meeting. I have a September meeting a Jan and a January meeting left this year. Okay. When is your September? Or do you know? I, I do not know offhand. I, okay. I can, I, I will definitely get it to you. Okay. Well, he'll get it to me and we'll put it in the notes when they come back out to everybody. And my understanding is our editor was supposed to get Mary Vaughn a article and i'm hoping yeah. that was taken care of i've not gotten it okay i uh sent out and a I'm couple i'm working on the quantogram right now so okay i'll have myself and susan lafond work on that thank you thank you Alrighty. and who else barbara angie do you have any input ma'am no ma'am i'm good thank you Okay, Victor will. Kim Armstrong's on. Kim, do you have anything to share with us? Kim is um, on through her work computer. She can hear us, but we cannot hear her. She okay. said she has nothing to report this evening. Okay. And then who's the 501 412 2489? Gary Baker. Yeah, yes. I have, uh, have nothing to report. Okay. Okay. Did I miss anybody? Yes. Ms. Julie. Uh, for the Builders Club, there's actually nothing to report other than that at International uh, Convention, they did have a meeting. Unfortunately, I was not able to be there. And uh, they're trying to uh, do a lot of work on development of. Uh, new clubs and i think that's going to be a good thing for this next year do they did anyone tell you when when they'd have some more information out hopefully by the beginning of the school year uh middle schools are pretty well done right now right so by august or september latest that's what we're expecting cool Thank you. Okay. That, it's in yes. The chat box when key clubs meeting. It's in the chat box when key clubs meeting September 16th and 17th. Yeah, I Thank got you, it. Susan. Thank goodness Jim has you. Don't don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody that is a lieutenant governor that has any problems or kudos in their divisions or anything that you would like to share with us? Well, I'd like to uh, say one. Go ahead, Tiffany, because you uh, may youth, understand what I was going to say. Well, Youth for Section met for their quarterly meeting on uh, June the 1st, but there was only three of us because they didn't send out the reminder. So we're going to reschedule that one, I think, for July for the quarterly meeting. So there was no updates there. Okay. Um, I got something from a friend of mine that's a JC in St. Charles. Yes. And the St. Charles JCs and the St. Charles Kiwanis Club yep. are having a joint social hour so that the JCs that are phasing out of being a JC, because you got to be under 40, isn't that correct, Tip? Yeah, they, they upped it to 45. So um, so they're, we're going to have a joint social on Thursday night. And um, tell the ones that are that are have uh, aged out uh, about Kiwanis. Oh well, yeah, so we might get some JC. Yep. So, old uh, people, old people that are forty six. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> forty sixers. We're getting them now. <laughs> we'll take all That's of fun. them. So Gordon. supposedly. So supposedly they were having a shortage a couple about five years ago and up their up their thing from 40 to 45. So anyways, but they they contacted us and wanted to do a social to tell the ones that they're that have aged out, which is that would be young for my group. So we're like, we, we will host for most Kiwanis clubs. Yeah. Yeah. 45, exactly. 45 sounds pretty young to me. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good to me. As long as Elmer doesn't scare them off. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're gonna try to try to see what Elmer doesn't like to drive past uh, 94, so we'll see what happens. Okay, there. good. <laughs> we'll keep him a we'll try to keep him a legend for that night. <laughs> All right. Carla, I'd like to report um on some club strengthening. You know, we tried to have a boost with uh Cedar County when we were there. I, I don't know how we would have done it, but anyway. Um, they did have their fair and they sold pies and they got three new members. So yes. I don't know that they've added them yet. So we is that all you is that all you gotta do is sell pies and get members? I, I we should have been doing this a long time ago. No yeah. That's right. What we just need to have somebody bake pies. That's if that's right. a motion if that's a motion, Mary, I second it. <laughs> <laughs> And actually, in conjunction with that, Will, I don't know if, if you would have interest, but, and I didn't mean to go around you, but we do have Rittner Club that we're still working with finding members for them. And we have a meeting tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. at Overland, yes, what is, Overland Business Association. So... Seven o'clock open, 7.15, the meeting starts, and we are going to be talking to them about membership to Rittner Club. And we'd love to have you if you wanted to be there. That would be awesome. Do they oh. meet at the community center? No, the business. They center. meet right across the street from the funeral parlor, and I'm not sure what that's called. It could be the community center. Yeah, I think it is. Let me see if I can find it. That's pretty much across the street from the funeral home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Well, didn't City it Hall. used to be a church? No. I thought it used to be a church and now it. It's their business. Barb, it may not be the community center because they do have a business association. Now. Okay. Right. They they always did, but they didn't have a location. So maybe they've got. Well, they may have found one. Yeah. Um. They do have a website, so I'll look it up. I will find the exact address and send it to you, Will, in case you would like to be there. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll check with Bethany this evening. And okay. Get and everything and see if, Super. See if, I, see if I can't make it. Yeah, we're, okay. We're, we've been doing Okay, work. folks, if we don't have uh, anyone. Uh, Will yes. was finishing so, a thought, see. Carla. Oh, no, that's a, I, hate to, I hate to bring a lot of things up until we've, we've completed them. I don't want to tell you about us trying to get members until we've gotten them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't hear what you said clearly, I'm sorry. Okay, what I said is we're we're making plans with, with the, uh, with Jennings and, and a couple of the other clubs on getting new members. We have some people that's interested in, in joining those clubs it's just a matter of getting with them and getting the application. I hate to report that we're doing some things. I like to report that we have members yeah. that have done something rather than saying we're doing some things, you know what I mean? But I think everything's beginning to come around now a little bit more than, than before. I think now they begin to look at it and see it's a little bit more, it was always serious, but I think the one or two members that they were meeting they didn't think it was that serious. But the whole thing is, I was, my thing is, what do you tell people when you ask them to join the Kiwanis? What do you tell them what you're doing? Because when I look at things, we're not doing anything. You know what I mean? We need to have, what are we doing? And the people want to join, you know? So I think right. we're just about getting that together. And uh, I, I think things will turn around. And probably at the next meeting, we should have a couple new members, you know. Okay. Yeah. And if you need any help making any of the brochures, I would be happy to help you do that for any of those clubs. Okay. One thing on the applications. I, can you hear me? Yeah. I, oh, okay. Maybe I need to speak up in this right here. On the applications, I thought at one time we had a larger application, a brochure. That was about eight and a half by 10 or 11. The one I have now is a threefold and it's a five by 10 or whatever it is. I thought we had a larger one than that. You know, more there, impressive, you know. There is both. 
There is both. There is an electronic one that's the eight and a half by 11. And okay. then there's the one that's in the trifold brochure. Okay, not just the page. Now I have that. I have the page of just the application, but I thought it was an it was there was a brochure at one time. We, we have, have a, we have a a, a, a brochure. One. That's the five about five and a half or somebody eleven or do something you, like do that. Do you need copies of that? No, I have I have those. I just thought it was another you know, but you're saying it's not. And that's the same thing the international told me. <laughs> they don't have it, but you know. Well, I have some, Will, if you want them. Okay. And and I'm looking at the Overland Business Association, and it says Overland Community Center. Tuesday, June 14th at 7 a.m. Yep. All right, so it's the community center. Okay. Carlo? Yes. I just, uh, since John Goss is in here, I just want to remind everybody to get out to their clubs about uh, Key Leader, uh, October in uh, Missouri, and the first weekend of November in Arkansas. I'm still working with him on that. Do we have any flyers, Jim? Uh, John did have some young lady make some flyers. I will have to see if I have access to them. If I do, I will send them to Carla or Mary, and they can get sent out. Are you yeah, looking for actually, one, Barbara, that any. has an application or just yeah. the information about the times and dates? Well, I don't. I think the application has to be done online. It does. But, and I know the cost has been reduced as well. So right. um, yeah, I that, will look, that's the information we need. I will look and get that out, and I'll even get it out to the webmaster if I can find it. Great, great. And the times on Friday and Sunday? Yeah, they arrive around four o'clock on Friday and then they leave at noon on Sunday. Okay, anybody else? Well, I might say uh, after all these years of being trustee, I finally have four lieutenant governors where I'm not having to fill in one of the divisions. So all four divisions have a standing lieutenant governor next year. Yay, Les. <laughs> Thank you. Yay, Les. Well, now that we have you officially able to be serving, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you don't need to, but... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But we have cured that problem, so that's a good thing. Yeah. Will you will you make sure I have all those names, Les? Okay. All right. I'll get them to you here as soon as we get done. Okay. Thank you. Okay, folks. Three minutes. Going once. Going twice. Thank you all. Have a great evening. Thank Bye, you. Carla. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Good evening. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Good night. Good seeing everybody.